everyone loves blender wait a minute you liar actually most beginners love blender while most top professionals hate it i've spoken with several industry professionals and some of them will point blank refuse to speak about it because they don't like the idea of 3d becoming so cheap and accessible to everyone most of the replies i get are quote there is nothing unique about a free product. If you really want to kickstart a professional 3D career, use Cinema 4D. As time goes on, try 3D's Max, Maya or Houdini. Blender as a free 3D's product only recently got its stuff together and has a long way to catch up in terms of functionality and pipeline workflow. If you really want to find it easy in the industry, work less on Blender. There is nothing too unique a free 3D product will offer professionally." Unquote. It's strange how some people are still stuck in the 1990s mentality, but I get it. Do you know how it feels like when you spend so much to acquire something only for you to come back later and other dudes are getting it for free? Such an ugly situation to be in, right? Let's be honest, you get pissed off quite a bit. I can tell you for a fact most Blender haters are going through this phase and I have one sitting next to me right now. He doesn't smile too much, especially if he gets to realize my works in Blender are able to match his works in ZBrush and Maya. Enough. Everyone on the bus. Now let's talk. Blender has some serious issues. This is not to say other 3D softwares don't. You should ride through the course of 3D's Max and you would see the mess other developers caused the software 15 to 20 years ago. Not to talk of the fact that Cinema 4D struggles to render. Also, the fact that Maya crashes based on some funny reasons. Just wait until your Houdini license server goes down or grey out. If you've never encountered a massive problem as a 3D artist, just chill, your time will soon come. The interesting thing is all of these problems are fixable but not always in a pleasant way and this can be life hunting if you are a novice. Blender with the right set of plugins can earn you a lot of money and even get you a job at a well respected company working on big games and movies. At that point, you would realize that all you had to do to get there was build your skills using a free software. The only time most Blender users spend money is when they need to take a course or support another Blender creator. Now, before I get into some of the general problems with Blender, let me list out a couple of specific issues that I still see as a problem and would like to see faced. My first personal problem with Blender is going to be its learning curve. Blender is a fairly complex software and the problem is that there are a lot of advanced features that are hard to find and use because they are hidden in certain corners. However, I believe that as Blender continues to optimize, they would find a way to make most of these advanced features more accessible to users because this can be a massive problem for absolute beginners. Customizing the user interface may seem like like a solution but it doesn't help that much. My second personal problem is going to be limited documentation. Blender's documentation is fairly comprehensive but it can be hard to access or understand if you are a novice. This makes it difficult to find specific answers to specific questions or problems. The commercial support for Blender is also low while there are a lot of online support for Blender. Not everyone is good at answering questions. This is not to say that people don't try but sometimes you just need a professional to guide you through. I've read a lot of articles about Blender improving their customer support system and I hope it gets better over time. My third personal problem will be working in a non-Blender environment. This issue fairly has little to do with Blender as a software, don't get me wrong. It can be difficult to collaborate with other 3D artists because most of them have never tried Blender, which affects planning and workflow, especially when the software is self-contained and has less room for other packages to operate within it. In summary, this limits your opportunities in certain industries, while some companies may value your skill and creativity and teach you their in-house method, other companies are not willing to do that. Now, this is my fourth problem and it has to do with performance when sculpting. I had an i7 CPU with 24GB of DDR3 RAM, a 4TB SSD and a GTX 1070 GPU with 8GB of VRAM solely dedicated to Blender and ZBrush but I had difficulty handling more than 3 to 5 million triangles when sculpting in Blender. This either slowed the computer down significantly or causes Blender to crash. I had to mention these specs so that others with similar hard 
hardware can be aware of this issue. On the other hand, ZBrush can easily handle 20 to 30 million triangles on the same spec without experiencing a slowdown or crash. This performance difference became a major issue for me when I decided to switch to sculpting entirely in Blender. Kindly let me know in the comment sections below what hardware specifications you have tried and are confident can handle 60 to 120 million polygons in Blender. I'm building a new machine to sculpt entirely in Blender and I would appreciate some old minds in this game. Now, I want us to discuss some of the general reasons why people aren't able to stay on Blender for long. The previous answers I discussed on are just my personal problems I go through as a Blender artist. Now to some general problems. One is going to be its tricky user interface. Blender has a difficult user interface that can be challenging to learn. In older versions of the software, it was difficult to find and use certain tools. However, recent updates have made it easier to access all of Blender's tools by selecting one of the workspaces at the top of the user interface. Each workspace is designed for a specific task such as UV editing and makes it easier to find the two if you need a particular task. However, the Blender layout can still be difficult to understand and it takes time for new users to learn how to use the user interface and access the tools they need. My number two general problem is that Blender can sometimes prove to be buggy. No software is perfect and Blender is no exception. Blender may have bugs in its updated and new versions. A bug is an issue that occurs unexpectedly when performing a command or action. For example, in Blender, there may be a bug where the snapping tool cannot connect a text object to a flat surface. Bugs take many forms but if you are using a stable release of Blender, you will generally encounter fewer bugs and should have fewer issues with general tasks. My number three general problem is going to be bug standard video editing. Blender is super powerful at tasks such as modeling and sculpting. However, some features of the software have not been updated as frequently in recent years. One example is the video sequence editor which was added to the originally intended 3D modeling platform. While the tools of the VSC can be useful, you may find that they lack some features or are not as polished as other parts of Blender. This can be frustrating especially if you rely on the VSC for your work. I always advise people to use DaVinci for their video editing. It's free except if you want to edit 6K and above. I always tell people that the fact that Blender is a complete suit doesn't mean you should use its video editor at all cost. Use DaVinci. It's also free except when you want to edit 6K and above footages, 10 bit color or work in teams, then you should consider DaVinci Resolve paid version but if you've still decided not to spend a dime then you can consider Blender's video editor and that's how your work becomes cheap. Now my next general problem is the fact that Blender isn't specialized at any task. Blender is not considered an industry standard too because it's a jack of all trade but a master at none. This means that it is capable of performing many different tasks but it is not the best at any one particular task. While Blender can be used to edit photos with its compositor, for example, there are other software options that are more specialized and performs that task more efficiently. These specialized applications are focused on a specific task or workflow and the development of the software is dedicated to improving its performance for that specific task. As a result, they may be more effective than a general purpose tool like Blender for certain tasks. Thus, if you really want to be a master in a specific field in the 3D world, Blender should be an alternative and not the main goal to because though it may serve you certain purpose, you might lack certain features that can only be accessed when paid for and they might not be available for Blender, therefore making your work cheap. Until my next video, Blender users keep tickling your balls. Get excited because there is yet more to come. Like and share if you love this video. Peace out.